Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to St. John's, and thank you so much for joining us uh, through the in-person service, as well as through uh, online service. Uh, you are now joined at 2024, the St. George Scout Sunday. Our heartfelt welcome goes to all Scout and the Scout leaders. Let's be, uh, give a big hand to welcome the Scout the Scout leaders. Uh, please open your, uh, uh, your bulletin. Uh, there are two, the mission, one is a report, and the other is a mission announcement. A Super Bowl the Sunday chili and the baked potato sale. Uh, the United Methodist Man they want to give a big thank you to our church family uh, for your support of annual chili and baked potato sale on Super Bowl Sunday a week ago. Uh, we sold 79 quarts of chili and 72 potatoes. Uh, your support makes them uh, keep going on uh, their wonderful ministry and mission. And thank you again. And then. Uh, any suggestion, recommendation, thoughts uh, to make uh, the, their mission uh, the more wonderful, uh, the, all your thoughts are so uh, greatly appreciated. And the women's prayer breakfast uh, this coming Saturday, the February 24th, uh, sa Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m., uh, St. John's United Women in Faith will host a prayer breakfast on Saturday. And the program is Lifting Up Voices for Climate Justice, a very interesting topic. The all women are invited, and the breakfast is free, but we ask for RSVP uh, to Brenda Romanius by uh, this coming Tuesday. Uh, please uh, join us and then mark your calendar. And also to make worship uh, today is so beautiful, uh, we are so grateful to uh, Children's Choir and Youth Band a sanctuary choir, and a poet Kigenja, and also one emerging young musician, pianist, uh, Elizabeth uh, Germanis. Where is it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's begin our worship service.
please rise. Will everyone please rise? Everyone, um, please, uh, Scott, salute or hand over your heart. Color guard, advance. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Scouts, please join me in the Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times. Myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. In scout law, the scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Thank you. I think everyone's supposed to stay standing for the next step. Oh, please be seated. I know many of you and those that I don't know, I'd be happy to spend some time and proving on that. Uh, my name is Ken Davis. I've been a member of the church for some time. Uh, and I have had some involvement in the scouting program since my son got his Eagle Scout here in 1995. And I'll tell you, we've had some, some good participation by the, by the church. Um, and I just want to thank you. This is uh, what we normally call Scout Sunday, uh, and it's always done in the Boy Scouts for America in February because the Boy Scouts for America was incorporated in Washington, D.C. on February 8, 1910. So we're up beyond 100, beyond 100, I didn't do anything, Oops, I don't think. It turned off on me. Hello? Hello. Ah, there we go. Okay, so just wanted to thank you, tell you where we are in Scouts, um, and, uh, and let you know what good work you do. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, we have had scouting here for a long time. Um, and I'm gonna let Scoutmaster Carl come up in a minute or two and tell you anything he wants to about the, the local scouting. Uh, but um, we know that Troop 980, uh, where you saw some members helping with the flag ceremony, uh, started meeting here sometime like 1979. And uh, then we had a new Scoutmaster come in who had come from out of town and I was luckily the one that directed him over here. And his name was John McCallum, who's since passed on. But uh, John was the scoutmaster here for 32 years. And in that time, we figure he had influence over the lives of three to 400 different scouts. And uh, some about, on an average, of about three Eagle Scouts a year, two and a half to three Eagle Scouts. Uh, Eagle Scouts a big deal. I think you, most of you know that. Uh, but I'll tell you one way you can tell people why it's so important. If you have a son or a daughter, uh, and girls can join girl troops now and become Eagle Scouts. If you have a son or a daughter that wants to go into the military and they're an Eagle Scout, they walk into the recruiter and say, I want to join the Army, which would be my choice, but uh, I want to join the Army and I'm an Eagle Scout. And the recruiter will reply by saying, I need a copy of your Eagle Scout certificate so that we can promote you the day you come on active duty. All the military services recognize that Eagle Scout is that valuable. Now, I want to point out to you in a different way, and most of you have seen this before. 
If you have ever been a scout leader, stand up. If you've ever been a scout or Girl Scout, stand up. If you have children or grandchildren who are in scouting and you're not already standing, please stand up. Oh. <laughs> okay, so look around. That's the majority of the people in this room, and that'll give you some idea about how valuable it is. Please be seated. Okay, so I want to give you a couple of updates, and I made some notes. I'm a historian. I'm required to have notes. Um, let's see. First of all, um, we are, uh, I looked on the board. We have a, a set of plaques over in Donaldson Hall that list Eagle Scouts, Eagle Scouts that have earned additional merit badges called POMs, and those who've received the Cross and Flame Adult Award. And I went through those, and uh, so there's some interesting stuff there. Um, for instance, we had several families, including Carl Smith's, who have had not one, not two, but three sons become Eagle Scouts. And if you don't think that's impressive, I can tell you that's impressive. Um, and Carl will give you some other stuff uh, later on. I want to particularly thank him because, um, and, and I'm, not, uh, I'm not parroting some kind of college connection because I don't have one here, but Carl is a graduate of Virginia Tech. And for those of you that are Hokies, I'm sure that's exciting. Uh, I always thought that people who are engineers were perfectly designed to be scout leaders because you gotta figure out a way to make everything work and get the round peg to go in the square hole and so on and so on. And engineers are usually pretty good at that. We have had multiple uh, families that had three boys become Eagle Scouts. Here's another thing that's a connection to St. John's. Um, we have had well, first of all, you may know the name of the Turner family or the Kendall family uh, who were not members here, and the Bedner family all had three boys in Scouts of Make Eagle. But here's the people who were family members of the church, uh, and I think I got them all written down, but Reed Moore, John Del Pizzo, Peter Scheibel, Mark Novak, my son Jared Davis, and Mick Werzer, all of those were members of the church who became Eagle Scouts. And Patty Parker's son, uh, I almost forgot him, and I went to Philmont with, with Michael, so I shouldn't have forgotten that one. Um, so there are uh, many, many parts of the church that have benefited from this. Uh, the other thing that benefits is uh, we try nearly every time there is a, 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 a cleanup day at the church or, or rake up leaves or whatever, we try and get some scouts involved in that. For sure, over the years, more than a few scouts working on their eagle, when they have to do a special kind of complicated organized service project for someone, uh, have done their eagle projects here. And my son Jared uh, redid the paths uh, out in the woods over there when he was working on his eagle. So we have that connection. Now, why do we care about scouting? Uh, is it different from sports? I played a lot of sports. My kids played a lot of sports. Trust me, it's different from sports. Partly because we take teenage boys and preteen boys. Girls don't necessarily need this quite as bad as boys do. But when they turn 11, we say, let's go have some fun. Let's do a canoe trip. Let's go camping. Let's do a backpacking trip. Let's climb a mountain. Let's go ride some horses. All of those sounds like a, pretty much a lot of fun. But there's a catch. In order to do it, you have to go on the camp out with members of your patrol, five or six or seven other scouts, and you must prepare to camp by yourself, and you must prepare to fix and clean up after your own food. Now, I'd like any mother here who would like to raise her hand to tell me that she has a teenage son or had a teenage son who said, oh boy, I want to do the dishwashing. <laughs> doesn't happen, doesn't happen. Most of the boys do not know that you can clean dishes without a dishwasher. And when we go camping, that's exactly what we do. But we make it fair by saying, um, last night you were the cook. You and John did a nice job. 
That was really good fun. You have a good time? Yeah, I like cooking. Well, tonight it's your time for you and John to clean up the dirty dishes. It's not hard. We'll show you how. You got to clean them with soap and water. You got to rinse them. You got to put a little disinfectant on it. There's a process, and you won't be left alone in the dark to do the dishes. But it's your turn, and it's the fair way for you to participate in scouting. Now, I've been watching scouts a long time. It's my opinion. That's the first time most of our 11-year-old boys have ever had to do something they didn't want to do because they saw the benefits of other things they could do if they were willing to occasionally wash dishes. So that's why we do scouting, and it's a broader uh, opportunity for young people to learn. Um, let me see. A couple other thoughts, and then I'll see if Carl would like to say something. Oh, I particularly want to tell you about Carl Smith. He is, I've been on many campouts and summer camps with him. He is, without question, a spectacular scoutmaster. He can handle all sorts of boys, and he's never, never difficult to deal with, even when he's got difficult boys. But um, he's so committed, that not only did he stay in the troop when his three sons were working on Eagle, in the last 17 years, uh, on two different occasions, he has served as our scoutmaster a total of 12 years. So we're not going to let anybody else know he's around because when he steps down, we'll probably need three people to replace him. And I appreciate very much what he does. Uh, total number of scouts in the troop right now is 28. That's larger than we've been recently. We prefer to have upwards of 30 to 32, so you can have four patrols of seven or eight kids. But we're doing fine in that area. Eagle Scouts, I want to tell you one more time, <clears throat> the plaques over there list 96 different boys who have achieved Eagle here. We have three more waiting in the wings who are basically done and have to get the paperwork done and have a final review. So we're right on 100 names that we know of. As Carl has pointed out to me many times, his father was a scoutmaster here some years ago, and we know there were eagles then and we lost the names. So we're pretty sure we're over 100 eagle scouts, and we'll be adding three more in the near uh, time. So we want to thank you for helping us. I want to point out that we don't have quite the same relation we had in years past because of the Boy Scout bankruptcy. And I was sorry that came along, but what happened was um, a few states decided that they would change the statute of limitations on child abuse. And that unfortunately brought uh, some scammers and some maybe not the best lawyers around to say, oh, well, we got to make some money here. Because when you do this, since there were 82,000 claimants, you have to say, do we have time to go to court with each of these? And the answer is no. So the Boy Scouts said, we will accept anybody's claim that they were somehow abused or treated badly in scouting. The thing that bothered me, and it's beyond us and behind us, so I think we're okay. The thing that bothered me is that 80 to 85% of those claims were more than 30 years old. It's not saying they weren't good claims, it just says there's no way we can know if that was because somebody got mad or somebody got smacked on the backside or somebody was truly hurt. So that's all behind us, but it does mean that the United Methodist Church has chosen not to formally be the sponsor or the chartering partner um, with the Boy Scouts. So what we did was sneak it around the door because everybody in this church who knows Scouts was nice to us. We found an official partner to sponsor us, which is the Ravensworth PTA, elementary school PTA, but they didn't really have a place for us to meet. And we were all really happy about meeting over here at St. John's. And St. John's, of course, was pretty happy about keeping us over here. So that's the way that's worked out. And for all practical purposes, we still meet on Monday nights like we always did, and we still try to help out the church when we can. Um, and that's worked out well for all of us. I just want to remind you, look at all the people you saw stand up. Think of those several hundred kids that have been in this troop since St. John sponsored it, and what a positive impact you have had on this community because of young people having a chance to grow up and learn to take care of themselves and to care about their country and so on. So thank you very much.
Carl, if you'd like to say a couple words. Try to cheer them up after the depressing stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm Carl. Uh, as uh, Ken mentioned, my father was a scoutmaster of this troop when I was very little. I went with a, con a couple camp outs with the troop when I was five. My father was a, an Eagle Scout. Um, he was a quartermaster in the Sea Scouts uh, and, uh, and all that. And... Uh, became the scout master of this troop you know, years and years ago. Uh, I always wanted to be a Boy Scout. Um, be, by the time I turned 11, I had read the Scout Handbook forward and backwards, Scout Field Book and all that. And uh, to me, uh, Boy Scouts is kind of a second religion to me. Um, you know, Christianity comes first, but uh, if you look at the Scout Law, which we recited earlier, Scout is trustworthy. Well, there's a commandment, you know, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. Uh, several other verses in the Bible talk about being trustworthy. Scott is loyal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt, you know, several other verses about that. You can go down to every point on the Scout Law and find a dozen Bible verses where we're commanded to do the same thing. So, you know, uh, the Boy Scouts was made to be ecumenical. You know, um, Baden Powell said it was had he wanted to attract you know Christians, Catholics, uh, Jews, uh, Islam all of those. They're common values that we all have and it's just become my you know don't know the word for it but uh, I always say if, if every young man and woman now that uh, Boy Scouts include uh, women, uh, if every person, uh, young person in the world would follow the Scout Law we'd have a much better world and so that's kind of what's been keeping me here for all these million of years and all that. Um, troop 980 has always been my troop, uh, although I was in another troop when I was in college, but uh, active with that. Um, but uh, in the end, you know, we're called to do our best, and you know, when it comes to my end, I'm hoping I can say that I always did my best to keep Troop 980 alive and scouting in this area alive, and can't do it alone, uh, and we appreciate I, I very much appreciate St. John's. That's been our sponsor for all these many years. Um, and I appreciate the, the adults that have come in. With, we've, we've doubled the size of our troop in the last couple years. And uh, the new scouts that have come in, they've, uh, a lot of them, almost all of them, have brought at least one of their parents to come and join on either the troop committee or as assistant scout masters. And so, um, as Ken said, it might take three people to replace me. So I'm making sure that there's plenty when that time comes. So uh, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you again, though, for your continued support.
Please join me for the call to worship, the print in the bulletin. In this season, we worship remembering Jesus' death in love for us and all people. But out of tears, joy is born, the joy of a sin forgiven, hope reborn, and life restored. We stand in awe of the God who brings joy out of tears and life out of death. Let us worship with reverence. Amen. Will you join me for the affirmation of faith, the hymn page 881 at the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, and maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From death he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can have a seat. All right. Uh -oh. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you. Wow, you did a wonderful job this morning. Thank you so much for your uh, time and the support uh, to make the worship service so beautiful. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, as we just a minute ago uh, the sang uh, the one hymn, the opening hymn, the Lord who throughout uh, did 40 days. What does it mean 40 days? We have a very special season. Yes. 40 days of Lent. Correct. You're right. Thank you so much. You're right. Okay, yeah, right. Thank you. So what are you supposed to do uh, these 40 days? Yes? Maybe we should uh, give away something like as representing uh, Jesus giving away his life oh. for us. Thank you so much. I think uh, you should be a preacher today, right? <laughs> All right, so I don't think I need to, to keep going on. But yeah, right, the Lenten season is a special season. Like the one is stopping, all things entertain us, and um, reducing amount of time for our own instead of focusing on the Jesus Christ. But one thing you should know is that during the Lenten season, the 40 days, every Sunday, every Sunday, like today, we, we, we understand every Sunday during Lenten season a little Easter, right? A little Easter. So we can celebrate and uh, uh, deepen our fellowship. Even you can do the party, right? Yeah, because uh, we uh, previously uh, taste uh, the great moment of Easter. So what about this uh, idea uh, during the weekdays? Uh, we more focus on Jesus Christ, but Sunday you can celebrate, have more fun with the family, the friends, and most of us support uh, the others. So that is uh, keeping good balance between loving God and loving neighbors. What about that? All right? Okay, let's pray together. 
The Holy God, thank you for uh, giving us such a beautiful Sunday. It is the first Sunday in Lent. As we are taking this special journey uh, during the 40 days, and to help us keep good balance, uh, thinking of you and thinking of our neighbors. And to Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. In the, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that it was good. Oh, who made the day, made the sun and golden ray, God our Father made the day, made the sun and golden ray, God our Father. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the darkness, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth grow green plant and, and tree. Let the, all the plants and trees have their own special seeds. And, and God, God thought it was good. You know who made the trees.
God of all ages, past and present, you are timeless and internal. You offer us today a covenant relationship that you first established with Noah. May we openly receive your powerful and timeless love. Pour out your blessings on the offering so that people throughout the generation respond to you with a res responding thank you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We join me for the hymn of illumination. At the face we sing the black curve of the one, the 2037, I sing praises to your name uh, by you spent. At the scripture reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses from 29 to 34, printed in the bulletin. And once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau that came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff. Uh, for I am famished, and uh, therefore he was called Edom. Uh, Jacob said, First, uh, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die, uh, but what use is a birthright to me? The Jacob said, uh, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And then Jacob gave Esau the bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. And thus Esau despised his birthright. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Our Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, and that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today at this moment. And to Christ we pray. Amen. According to the church calendar, the tradition, uh, you know, uh, today is the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier during the children's message, uh, this is a great moment to celebrate our wonderful ministry, right? A little Easter. So we see the young leaders, uh, the young men, the people, and kids and children and enjoying the, their beautiful talent and gifts today. And thank you so much. And also the uh, fantastic breakfast today. Uh, the message man that did a wonderful job uh, to host uh, such a beautiful, uh, wonderful breakfast today. Thank you so much. And plus, some of you know that uh, this week uh, from today uh, through this coming Saturday is Brotherhood and Sisterhood Week. 
So with that, uh, the story uh, this morning we just uh, read a minute ago uh, resonates with us in many ways. Why? The story, a uh, story of two brothers, Esau and Jacob, is a story of a temptation uh, that all Christians uh, should overcome uh, this Lenten season. And also this story is a story of uh, two brothers, uh, literally. Uh, traditionally, this story uh, presents how the Jacob uh, could take Esau's uh, birthright. We all know it. In Hebrew tradition, uh, there was a special blessing uh, for the elder son only. As an elder son, uh, Esau was supposed uh, to receive a special, very special blessing uh, from his dad, Isaac. Jacob was not comfortable uh, to see this. Uh, first of all, he was uh, born almost at the same time as Esau. It was uh, like a, a short track, the speed skating, right? The very competitive. Anyhow, the Esau uh, became the Jacob's uh, elder brother. Uh, but Jacob was uh, thirsty uh, for the special blessing uh, given to Esau. In the eyes of a face, uh, this story supports Jacob's side strongly. Uh, please look at uh, the verse uh, 34 carefully. Uh, then Jacob gave Esau the bread and lentil stew, and he ate and uh, drank and rose and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. You know what? If we agree that, the history is written by uh, the winner, the powers, and the survivors. And all stories and history about kings and uh, their dynasties have uh, their basic rules uh, to write on their own to beautify and justify. In that sense, I have a reservation uh, to explain that Jacob got a birthright because uh, Esau uh, despised it. It is understandable, but it's limited to uh, knowing the details uh, between Esau and Jacob. Still, we don't know uh, what kind of a conflict and communication and a plot and the give and take in between. But uh, there is one clear idea to see the two brothers, Esau and Jacob. They all were not free from controlling temptation or wrong desires. For Esau, he failed to manage physical uh, temptation, hunger, or fatigue. Jacob was tempted to more uh, blessed or dominate all blessings in his family. I'm not sure whether uh, Jacob was a person of uh, a metaphysical uh, temptation or not. Evidently, uh, Jacob failed to manage his temptation. The here is a question for you. Uh, what if Esau uh, could control his hunger and uh, be a little bit more patient in the story? Or what if Jacob could control his desire and be thankful uh, for who he was? You know what? Isaac had only two sons, Esau and Jacob. Certainly, they had no problem in living their lives regardless of being an elder son in their family. Still, they, they could have a lot. But both Esau and Jacob had no sense to manage their temptation. So, the story is a story of a temptation clash. The, what this clash remained was so bitter, they lost a brotherhood. As we take this year's Lantern journey, uh, what is the biggest takeaway from uh, the story today, especially from the two brothers? Ironically, the story of the two brothers is still ongoing in the world. Many people are dying of wars, hunger, 
wrongly greedy desires and a wrong sense of uh, superiority. Yes, uh, the world is full of uh, temptation clashes now. With that, uh, this year's Lent is uh, so special to think of others and to uh, look into oneself uh, carefully, uh, thereby uh, to come up uh, with uh, something to make uh, the world beautiful. It should be our mission in this Lenten journey. Also, this is uh, what the scouts are looking for now. They hope that all scouts and their leaders uh, can do something to make our community beautiful, uh, communicable, and peaceful. And while all the world is experiencing a broken a brotherhood, a sisterhood, or a scout whom we meet today uh, can recurve humanity in our world uh, by their service. To do this, the first thing that we need to do is uh, be a servant uh, with a humble uh, spirit. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, came to this world uh, with the humble spirit as a servant. Instead of insisting on his desire or, or thought or even plans, that he did his best uh, to serve all uh, from the bottom. And then I uh, became our Messiah. So now as we are celebrating uh, this year's Scout Sunday, even for us, the hope that we uh, want to be a humble servant and to make uh, this world, uh, this community, and this neighborhood the more beautiful and peaceful. Amen. So I would like to invite uh, you to uh, share your joys and concerns. So let me begin it. Uh, I think uh, today is uh, uh, Tom Moore's birthday, right? Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. And the uh, one, um, the sad news is that uh, some of you already heard that our long term the church member, uh, Shirley Verdi, uh, she passed away uh, this week. Um, uh, on her last years, uh, uh, she was uh, struggling, fighting against an Alzheimer uh, in the memory care. But uh, she went home with the Lord uh, peacefully. So uh, this coming Thursday, this, uh, February 22nd, Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary, uh, there will be visitation. And then 11 a.m., uh, we are going to do her uh, the funeral service in the sanctuary. And right after the, uh, the service, uh, all are in, uh, the invited to join uh, the reception in Donaldson Hall. And at 2 p.m., uh, there will be a burial service at uh, Fairfax uh, Memorial uh, Cemetery. Uh, more details will be uh, emailed out, uh, the church-wide email, uh, if necessary. So please uh, keep uh, Shirley Verdi in your prayers and her family too. Our deepest condolences uh, go to uh, all her family. Is there anything you can to share your uh, joys and concerns? Jay? A uh, microphone is on the way. Okay, thank you, Patty. <coughs> yes, good morning, everybody. Just passing along that there was a uh, Mom had uh, needed her uh, hearing aids replaced. There's a little bit of a delay. It was going to be this past week. Combination of uh, see, uh, weather and delay. Uh, she delayed that till February 29th. When Mom's going to get her new uh, uh, hearing aids, and uh, she's just as continuing as along uh, see, as ever, and uh, still limited in mobility. And just as always, uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to expend. Uh, Extend love and prayers, uh, see, and uh, gratitude and best and blessings to uh, see everybody here. Appreciate all the inquiries about mom. Uh, see, 
that goes for mom and me and uh, my sister Jennifer Bridges who's uh, providing so much care while I'm tied up with a couple of jobs and uh, just uh, wanted to pass along uh, how much uh, your care it means to all of us. Thank you. Who else would like to share? Carol? Yes, I have a joy. Um, I'm a great aunt again. Um, it's Barbara and Randy Pratt's former members. Um, great granddaughter had a baby on Friday. Oh. A baby girl, Reese Elizabeth. So. Congratulations. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the face generation, yeah, never stopped, right? Yeah, good. Who else? Anybody? Good morning, church. Good morning. I just want to say thank you to all of you for the prayers that you um, kept up for me while I was sick. And JW also know that I, would, I kept him you know, in contact of what was going on with me because I had fell in my bathroom and then I had um, gotten three staples in my head because it had gotten cut. Yeah, but everything's fine. I'm doing good and here I am today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edwina. Thank you. <laughs> uh, who else would like to the joys and concerns? If now they're keeping all things in our mind, uh, let's pray in silence. Let's pray together. <clears throat> and now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray at the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil but that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen would you please stand up if you are able uh, please join me for the closing hymn the page 467 trust and obey Let's sing only first verse and the verse four. I go in peace, open to the call and the grace of God, the blessing of God's unfailing love, a Christ's unceasing presence, and the speech unsurpassed gift. Be with us all now and forever. 
Amen. And please be seated. So uh, our postload is uh, in the bulletin. It's Hakuna uh, Wakaita Sayesu. This is a Zulu language. So you have an opportunity to sing another language. I was talking to uh, John Novak and told me Americans don't have a history of uh, mouth languages. But I said, no, they speak so many English languages. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to sing. So please stand up as you're able. The words are in the bulletin uh, under the postcode. So, Hakuna, everybody say Hakuna. Hakuna. Wakaita. Wakaita. Sayesu. Sayesu. Hakuna. Hakuna. Wakaita. Wakaita. Saye. Saye. Hakuna. Hakuna. Wakaita. Wakaita. Sayesu. Sayesu. Hakuna. Hakuna. Wakaita. Wakaita. Saye. Saye. Oh, now you know another language. So, let's stand up and. and by the way, feel comfortable to dance a little bit. Uh, I think Willow here has showed us a dance. Yeah. You remember the dance, Willow? Okay, so it's just shaking the hip a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so please stand up. Yeah. 